Well, Danny Roll is as angry as we've ever seen him following the Middlesbrough game, and he probably every right to be. What is happening to Sheffield Wednesday? Where's the fight gone? We're going to find out with our owls, Andrew and Matt. How are you both? Well, frustrated, disappointed with what's been going on recently, but uh, onwards and upwards, hopeful. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the Wednesday View. We're going to talk about the Middlesbrough game and talk about the Swansea game. We're also going to obviously preview uh, the game uh, coming up this weekend, which is huge at QPR. And we're also going to find out who the player of the month for March is. Um, Matt, you listened to Danny Rowe's interview, I'm sure, after the Middlesbrough game. Um, for the first time in his press conference that I've seen anyway, uh, the guy looked fed up and angry. Um, I think he's always been very supportive of his players, but... You can't support performance like that, could you? No, he had absolutely every right to be. Um, it was as bad as I've seen us this season, and I am including the first 10 games under Cisco Munoz, um, in terms of everything that you would want from a team who are in a relegation scrap wasn't there. Um, the real telling point in his, in his interview that he gave to uh, BBC Radio Sheffield was he was talking about things that were not wildly complex. They were things like, if a ball goes to the left, the whole team must move to the left. If a ball goes to the right, a whole team must move to the right. And it was very evident that after the opening five minutes where we looked okay, Marvin Johnson got in behind and we played the ball in behind over the top a couple of times and looked fairly threatening. Uh, When Middlesbrough settled into their passing rhythm and we sat off them, which is an absolute cardinal sin of Middlesbrough, because if you do sit off them, they will, and they do have the players to kind of bop it about and get themselves into a rhythm. It was almost like our players just shook their hands up and went, yeah, we're not going to see the ball off this lot. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, And it was as close to a downing tools act um, from 90 minutes as you've seen, which you can understand if a team comes and plays you off the park, like we spoke about Ipswich last week, they come and play you off the park. Okay, hands up. Same for Southampton, same for Leeds. As a fan, you cannot excuse that performance from a group of players um, who have shown over the course of the season that there is fight in there when their backs are up against the wall. You know, I, we sat here in February and discussed how wonderful everything was and how rosy everything was and how great a job that the players and the coaching staff had done to put us back into that position. I'm thrilled to see the back of March. Absolutely thrilled. One win from March is simply not good enough at a time like this where, let's face it, going into that Easter break and that Easter weekend, we could have actually got ourselves out of it with the way the results have gone. Um, yeah, the Middlesbrough, the Middlesbrough game was everything that is bad about Sheffield Wednesday at the minute in terms of the, it just the performance just epitomised sort of that apathy from that has existed for large parts of the season amongst the fan base. Um, and it was just there on the pitch uh, for 90 minutes. And Middlesbrough took full advantage, credit to them. Um, didn't play particularly well, I didn't think, but took advantage um, and, and took the three points. Very mysterious, uh, Mike, because at the end of the day, um, we had a great run, four successive wins, 12 points on the board. And then we knew that the Leeds Ipswich game was going to be very difficult. And obviously, okay, we've got nothing there. But I was very hopeful with the game at home to Swansea. And that, that is actually a key, crucial result that was for us. We really should have won that game. We should have won that game. You know, we had the chances to win the game without a shadow of doubt. And the irony is that we could have had that second goal, Ukpo, hit the crossbar. That had bounced under the bar, in the back of the net, 2-0, literally just before they got their equaliser. Different story altogether, again. But unfortunately, it didn't go in. It came out. And then straight away, literally within a minute or later, it's up the other end. And even then, their equaliser, a bit of suspicion about that, because they were saying... Um, the, the guy, I was looking at it very carefully. Did he did the, touch it with his hand to help guide it in? You know, it's, it was very debatable. And, and I can, I know referees would, would have disallowed that. So very frustrating. We end up with only one point. That, that's the, more, the most annoying thing at the moment. That, that, I could have taken even the defeat at Middlesbrough if we'd have got the win against Swansea. Because the win against Swansea would put us level with Plymouth now. We'd be above Huddersfield. And we'd still, have, we'd still be in a, in a stronger position than we obviously are in those, those two points. I hope don't come to bite us up on the backside before the end of the season. And the key words were that Danny was using before this um, disappointing run was togetherness. There was certainly togetherness about the club. The word he used after Middlesbrough was nothing. And yes, they were nothing. And now we've got to go to QPR and prove that we are something. That is, that is crucial. We've got to actually go and do that this Saturday. I don't know whether it's your the positivity that both of you brought on this channel. As a neutral, as I sit and listen to it, I've never 
once thought that Wednesday would go down. I, I haven't. You, you've you've talked together about you know how unlucky you've been and how you uh, together yeah. you've talked about the team. But I've read Twitter over the last twenty four hours and uh, obviously watched the highlights of your of your game and listened to the Middlesbrough fan who was on earlier who said you're the worst side that he's turned the worst side all year. And now I actually feel you might. And um, I, I'm guessing if I feel like that, do you, do you both? I know Andrew, you're usually very positive, and I, I love you for that. But do you both have a sense of this? This is actually we're actually back in League One in, in, in a month's no. time. No, I'll let Matt go first, and I'll tell you why I say no. Go on, Matt. <laughs> um, this is the first time that I've been nervous all season um, since since Danny Rolls come in since about Christmas that we are going down. Um, I, the February before the Millwall game, if you'd have asked me, I'd have said, "Yeah, it's pretty much dead and buried. We're just kind of hanging on." And if we can get to, I've been saying it all season. If you can get to Easter and you're still in with a chance, he's done an absolutely fantastic job, irrespective of what remains in the final eight games. <laughs> and I still maintain that. To look at where he came in and we were 12 points adrift of, of safety. We were seven away from Rotherham, which is, you know, some doing. Um, he's done a fantastic job. With eight games remaining, to take one point from two is simply not good enough at this time of the season. Um, and I know the squad, that is probably on par with what the squad is capable of. They are, in my opinion, under this manager, it's a team that could sit anywhere between 21st and 14th. That's realistically where it would all play out if if this manager had been in from the start of the season. Yeah. You have six games left. And, and as Andrew quite right, you said earlier, QPR now becomes a, a feeling of you have to win it or you're down. Because yeah. although QPR, for, for my own, from my own perspective, I think they're out of it. I think they're safe, QPR. Um, at home, they are brilliant. And we are appalling away from home. The first goal on Saturday is so important because if we concede, we have taken four points from losing positions all season. And it will be a complete waste of a eight o'clock drain down to London and 30 quid on a ticket for myself with a restricted view on Saturday. <laughs> um, it will just be, yeah, it's just so massive. It is the first time that I have thought for a long while Yes, we could end up in League One um, because of the because of the level of importance of the games and how few there are remaining. This squad showed at the back end of last season the key spine of that squad, which is still there in Michael he Michael Hequa, William Vokes, Barry Bannon. Um, you could argue Michael Smith, who's in and around the team as well again now. Proved towards the back end of last season that the pressure got too much for them. Irrespective of what happened at Peterborough, irrespective of what happened at Wembley, it proved too much for them. And, and Plymouth and Ipswich rightly went up as the, as the top two. It feels all a bit 12 months ago at the moment in terms of when that pressure's on, when the games are there remaining, when it's not a one and done, that this squad seemed to think, ah, there'll be, there'll be another game, there'll be something else there. And that is, I mean, you're going into a, a much longer conversation here, Mark, about the deep-rooted issues that exist at Sheffield Wednesday way beyond this season. But yeah, it is the first time that I am now starting to think this might not turn out to be the fairy tale ending at home to West Brom or away to Sunderland in the last two games. Um, but saying all of that, nobody really capitalised on our misfortune over the weekend in terms of not taking those points. And we are still within touching distance. And you beat QPR on Saturday and you're right back in the mix of it and results go your way. You are back to exactly where you were at the start of Easter weekend. Yeah, Matt, Matt's made valid points there, of course. And at the end of the day, where, where we're at now is that um, luckily Plymouth and Huddersfield are right there with us and we have every chance of finishing above both of those. Um, also, Birmingham and QPR did move away. I did say to you, I didn't think QPR would be relegated ages ago. And they got their win ugly 1-0 wins at the weekend, which has pushed them away a bit now. So Rangers obviously are still be a little bit nervous because they won't want to lose to us. They're going to try and play well against us. They've only scored eight goals more than us this season. So they haven't actually got a... a an attack that fires. They, are, they can be dangerous going forward, but we beat them at Hillsborough. We came from behind to beat them at Hillsborough 2-1 with a couple of late goals there. We've got to make sure, as Matt says, that we don't concede early. We were a bit unlucky at Middlesbrough. Think about it. That first goal was an own goal. That header was going wide. It hit our defender and went in. So that was annoying, the way they scored. But, you know, OK, accept it. We lost 2-0. End of story. The game's gone. But now we've got to just make sure we don't fall behind at QPR, keep it 0-0 and go for this 1-0 win ugly, try and get the three points. And also, having said that, even if we don't win at QBR, if we draw there, 
the target has got to be for these last remaining um, six matches, we've got to look at 11 points. We've got 11 points is what we're looking at and to reach 50. We've got to aim for 50. And it's doable because I'm looking at those games and I'm thinking to myself that um, we can definitely uh, get the home get games won against Stoke and West Brom. West Brom by that stage will be safely in housed in the playoffs clearly and they'll be resting players if they're sensible. I doubt they'll be playing um, their, their best team uh, against us by that stage. So those two are definitely winnable. Norwich will be a tougher game because they're still trying to get in the playoffs. I accept that. And if we end up with a draw there, that's so be it. That means we've got to win one, draw one and lose one of the three away games to make us to reach that 11 points, that magical 50 target. And looking at those three fixtures, it's doable. So again, losing at QPR is not the end, though people will say it is the end. If we win at Blackburn and draw at Sunderland or draw at Blackburn and win at Sunderland, you know, who knows? It's still possible. And especially then you've got to get the results. But Method and Huddersfield are still going to get their results. And I see there's some of them playing each other. They'll be dropping points there and then. You know, it's it's doable. We can do this. That's why I said the word hopeful earlier on. Okay. Um, Huddersfield have slightly easier six games uh, than you do, and I would prefer Plymouth games, actually, although they've still got Leicester to play, but I would certainly prefer Plymouth games over yours because, actually, looking at this, it's your away fixtures where your potential mm-hmm. wins can come from here. Sunderland playing for nothing. Uh, Blackburn will be safe by then, and QPR, like you've already highlighted, Norwich have something to play for, Stoke will still have something to play for, and West Brom will be probably trying to avoid wherever <laughs> Leicester or Ipswich finish. So, um, yeah, I don't fancy your home games at all. But, hey, you can, you're can you not down yet. And if it's a neutral's point of view, we can't lose Plymouth fans from this league. They have been brilliant all year. We can't lose Wednesday fans from this league because Middlesbrough, as much as they said you were awful, said, by goodness, those Wednesday fans that came to the Riverside sank, even when you were 2 nil, 2 nil down, some of the best set of fans that have visited. So we can't lose Chef Wednesday yeah, from this let's league. Let's be clear, let's be clear, Mark. Plymouth Argyle are not Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> Historically, you know, four times champions of England, three times FA Cup winners, League Cup winners. You know, we Hillsborough used the World Cup 66, Euros 96. You know, we got a record attendance of 73,000 at Hillsborough before. Please, no no insult to Plymouth, but let's be realistic here, yeah? All right, <laughs> let's get some score predictions from you, though, both of them, please. Um, QPR against Wednesday. Go on, Matt. <laughs> um, oh. I, I, I has, you have to win. You have to you have to win even just to relax everybody's nerves in a fan base that can turn very quickly for all of that waxing lyrical that you've just done, Mark, about how wonderful we all were up at Middlesbrough. And don't get me wrong, it was. We've done that a couple of times this season. It, it can be a fan base that can turn quite nasty quite quickly. Um, I, I Again, heart says 1-0, head says 1-1 one, one draw. Yeah. Andrew? Yeah, I think Matt's probably summed it up there. That's probably exactly what I was going to say, strange enough. You know, I, I, it, it, we'll probably take the draw if it comes to it. If, we get my, if, it's, if it's part of my 11 points plan, which will save us, I'll take the point. I'll take the point. But a win, a 1-0 win would be an absolute bonus there. To do the double over them would be great. Get in there. Okay. All right. A uh, quick one. Literally 10 seconds. No, no uh, long explanations here. Player of the month for March. Andrew, go. Oh, that's ridiculous. What have we done in March? As Matt summed it up, March is an absolute nightmare month. I'll give you three players a month in March. Give me one. Give me one. No, no, I have to give three. The three goal scorers. Gasama, thank you. One nil win. Ugbo, thank you. One nil win. And Kadamatri, thank you. One one draw. That's it. Matt? Uh, Quite simply, Mark, I don't have one. Well, there we go. That's it. As bad as it's been. All right, Wednesday fans, uh, comment below. Last, about last minute goal, Mark. Remember the 94th minute for um, Masaba against QPR this season for a last minute winner, 2 1. I'll take that on Saturday as well. All right, nice one. Stoke Wednesday. away was quite special as well. <laughs> yeah. Comment below, Wednesday fans. These two, I, I well, yeah, I, they've still got the energy. I don't know if all, all the rest of you have. Comment below whether you think Wednesday will stay up and where the, where the points are coming from in those. Six remaining features. Thank you both. Enjoy your trip to Loftus Road. Cheers. We'll see you next week. Thank you.